So let's suppose we want to determine what all the stereoisomers are of aldopentose. So to determine this information, we have to first actually determine what the structure of aldopentose is. So the aldo part of aldopentose means that the first group on our molecule, on our sugar, is our aldehyde. So we have the carbon double bonded to an oxygen and we have an H atom on the other side. <clears throat> on the other side. Now, the pentose part of our aldopentose sugar means we have a total of five different carbons. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. Now, on any aldose sugar, we basically have an aldehyde group on one end, on the top end, and the primary alcohol group on the bottom end. So we have the primary alcohol and our aldehyde. And these carbons basically contain an H atom attached on one side and the hydroxyl group attached to the other side. Let's suppose all the OHs basically point to the right and all the Hs basically point to the left. So this is, uh, this is actually a type of aldopentose that falls into the category of D-aldopentose, where D simply means it's the isomer that contains the hydroxyl group, the OH group, found on the final stereogenic carbon pointing to the right. So how many stereogenic carbons do we have on this molecule in the first place? Well, this carbon is not stereogenic because it contains only three groups. This carbon is stereogenic as this one and this one is because each one of these contains four different groups attached to the carbon atoms. Now, this carbon is not stereogenic because it contains two of the same groups, two of the same atoms, the H atoms, attached to our carbon. So basically, we have a total of three stereogenic carbons, and that means using this equation, 2 to the power of n, where n is the number of stereogenic carbons in the sugar, we have a total of 2 to the 3, so we have a total of 8 stereoisomers of aldopentose. Four of these stereoisomers are the D sugar, and the other four are the L sugar. So four are D aldopentose and four are L uh, uh, sugar, <coughs> excuse me, four are L aldopentose. So this is always true. If it was 16, then eight would be D sugar and the other eight would be L sugar. So let's determine, let's first begin by determining all the four different stereoisomers known as the D-aldopentose. So this is one example of the D-aldopentose. It has a specific name. It's called the D-ribose. Now let's begin with the second one. So we have our aldehyde group. We have the second carbon, the third carbon, the fourth carbon, and the fifth carbon, which contains our primary alcohol. Because we have the D aldopentose, this OH found on the last stereogenic carbon points to the right. That's exactly what we mean by the D sugar. Now, let's suppose that this OH also points to the right, but this OH points to the left. This is the second example of a D-aldopentose that is different from this D-ribose molecule. This also has its own name, but I don't actually remember what the name is. You can look up the name online or in a textbook. So, let's move on to the next one. So, we have our five carbons. The last one contains the primary alcohol. Now, in this case, we have all the OHs pointing to the right. In this case, we have two OHs pointing to the right, and this one points to this side. Now, let's suppose we have this OH must still point to the right because we're looking at the D-aldopentoses. Let's suppose that now this OH 
points onto this side, while this OH points onto this side. So now we have yet another D-aldopentose. So this D-aldopentose is different than this one as a result of the difference in stereochemistry of this carbon here. This one is different than this one because we have a difference in the stereochemistry between this carbon as well as this carbon. And this is different from this one because of the difference in this carbon here, the stereochemistry of the middle carbon. And the final molecule, the, fi the final D, sugar, D-aldopentose, basically contains these hydroxyl groups both pointing to the left side, while the final one obviously points to the right side because we're looking at the D sugar and not the L sugar. So in all these four molecules, this final hydroxyl group attached to the final stereogenic carbon points to the right. And so these are all categorized as being the D aldopentoses. For example, this is the D-ribose, and each one of these is called its own name. Now, let's look at the L-sugar. The L-sugar, let's also actually number them. So we have this is number one, this is number two, this is number three, and this is number four. And let's go on to number five, then we'll do six, then we'll do seven, and then we'll finish off with eight. So, now in each one of these molecules, the big difference is, lies in the last carbon compared to these ones. Because in this case, the last stereogenic carbon contains the OH point to the right, but here we're going to have the OH pointing to the left. So the final one, as always, contains our alcohol. Now the OH, in this case, points to the left. And that's exactly what we mean by the L sugar. So all these four molecules fall into a category known as the L aldopento. So let's begin by supposing that our OHs all point to the right side. This is one example of our stereoisomer. The next one, let's say, looks like this. So once again, OH points here, the H points here. Now let's suppose this OH still points to the right, but this OH will now point to the left. So that this is different than this as a result of the difference in stereochemistry of this first carbon here. Now let's look on, let's look at the last, not the last one, the seventh one. We have the OH. So once again, this is what differentiates L from D. So in this case, the OH pointing this way. In this case, it points this way, but now let's suppose our OH point, points this way, but our OH here points in this direction, so that this is different than this as a result of this stereogenic carbon here. And this one is different from this as a result of this middle stereogenic carbon. In this case, it points to the left. In this case, it points to the right. And finally, let's look on to the final molecule that is part of our L aldopentose system. One, two, three, four, five. Then we have our OH. And now let's suppose all our OHs point onto the same exact side. So this is the final molecule on which all the OHs point to this side. Notice that this molecule is not the same molecule as number one. In fact, number one and number eight 
are enantiomers with respect to one another. So on one, all of these have the same absolute configuration. On the other, they have the opposite absolute configuration. So this is the enantiomer of this molecule. In fact, if we look at this molecule here, we have an enantiomer version of this molecule down here. Now, what exactly is that? Well, basically, it's this molecule here. Number two is the enantiomer version of number seven. Because the OH is pointing this way, here it points this way. The two H is pointing this way. The H is here pointing this way. And we this one doesn't really matter. So this is the enantiomer version of this. This is the enantiomer version of this. This is the enantiomer version of this. And this one is the enantiomer version of this one. So these four molecules are known as D aldopentoses, and these four molecules are known as L. Aldopentose. 